Agricola is a farming-themed worker placement game for one to four players. Players take turns using their workers to select actions, which allow them to build their individual farms. Once all the players have placed all of their workers, the round is over. At the beginning of each round, a new action becomes available, allowing players to do things they weren't able to at the beginning of the game. The game is played in 14 rounds, and once the final round is complete, the game is over. Whoever has the most points is the winner. You'll score points for most things that you do in this game, but there's a point cap on each different category. So building a variety of things is the best way to achieve the maximum score. With all that said, let's learn to play Agricola. Inside of the box, you'll find a game board, extensions for the game board depending on the number of players, some optional action extensions, individual player boards, wooden tokens for each individual player and for the general supply, several cardboard tokens. These include the food tokens, the double-sided wooden room and field tiles, the double-sided clay and stone room tiles, the double-sided begging tokens, and resource multipliers. These can be used as stand-ins if you ever run out of resources during the game. And the action suggestion markers. These three tokens are included for people who are teaching the game to younger players. You can use these to mark what you would suggest that they do on their turn. If you give them more limited options, it might make it easier for them to grasp the game. Two decks of cards, a rule book, a handy appendix, and multiple empty bags, so you can store things however you want. To begin setup, set out the main board. Choose the add-on that corresponds with the number of players you have. Decide on any optional extensions. The appendix has some information on when is best to use these. Now find the cards with the green backs. They'll each have numbers on them, ranging from 1 to 6. Put these in order, but randomize each number with itself. So for the four cards that have number 1, you want to shuffle them, and then put them on top of the cards with number 2. There should be 3 cards with number 2, and so on. Put these beside the main board, and flip over the first one with the number 1 on it. To set up the yellow deck, we may need to take some of the cards out, depending on the number of players you have. This symbol here corresponds to the number of players. If you only have 1 or 2 players, use all the cards with the 1 plus symbol. For 3 players, add all the cards with the 3 plus and for 4 players, add all the cards with the 4+. plus. Shuffle this deck and deal out 7 cards to each player. For the orange deck, you'll see that there's no symbol there. You'll use all of these cards regardless of the number of players you have. Simply shuffle this deck and deal out another 7 cards to each player. There are some red cards left over. These are going to be placed face up onto the major improvement board. This is a general pool for all players to buy from. Hand each player their player board and their tokens. The player boards are double-sided. It doesn't matter which side you use, they're the same except for the artwork. Place all of the rest of the wooden tokens into a general supply. Put all the food tokens into the general supply, and put all the double-sided room tiles into the general supply. Any action spaces with this arrow symbol indicate that they are accumulation spaces. If you place a worker on an accumulation space, you'll take all the resources there. At the beginning of each round, you'll add the number of resources indicated. Randomly choose a starting player and hand them the yellow starting player token. This player will receive two food at the beginning of the game. All of the other players will receive three food. The game is played in 14 rounds, divided into six stages. At the end of each stage is a harvest, indicated by this cornucopia symbol. During each round, players will take turns placing their workers on action spaces and taking those actions. After all the workers have been placed, the round is over. Each player will take back all of their workers. You'll flip over the next action card, replace all the resources on the accumulation spaces, and the next round will begin.
During the harvest, the players will have a chance to reap their fields, then they have to feed all their workers, and then they get to breed their animals. Some of the actions will allow you to build things on your farm board. Whenever you're building, if you already have something of that type built, you have to place the new building adjacent to the old one. If you don't already have something of that type built, you can put it wherever you want. There are three main types of things you can build. Rooms for your house, pastures, and farmland. Pastures can be built either as a fenced-in area, a stable, or a fenced-in stable. Stables can hold one animal, fenced-in areas can hold two animals, and fenced-in stables can hold four animals. If you'd like to build a fenced-in area that spans more than one tile, you can do so, it just has to be closed with nothing separating the tiles from each other. Stables essentially double the capacity of a fenced-in area, but you only need one per fenced-in area. So if you build a fenced-in area covering two tiles, the stable will double the capacity of both. However, if later on in the game you were to place another fence separating the two tiles, this one would still hold four, but this one could only hold two. It's important to note that each area can only hold one type of animal, even if it spans over more than one tile. Your house can also always hold one animal. Regardless of the number of rooms, it can only hold one. If you take an action that gives you more animals than you can hold, then all the animals you don't have capacity for escape. Don't place them back on the action card, they go back to the supply. Once a worker has been placed on an action space, no other players can take that action until the round is over. I'm going to give you a quick overview of each of the actions printed on the game board. These will all be available starting in the first round. The farm expansion action allows you to build rooms. Each room that you build will cost two reed and five of either wood, clay, or stone. You can build as many rooms as you can afford whenever you take this action. You can only build new rooms that are the same type as the rest of your house. So if your house has all wooden rooms, you can't build a stone or clay room. You can only build a new wooden one. In order to upgrade your house, you need to use a renovation action, which will become available later on. This and or means you could also take this action to build stables. Each stable costs two wood. Again, you can build as many stables as you can afford. The meeting place allows you to take the first player token, meaning that as long as you hold this token, you'll be the first player to go every round. Again, there's an and or. If you don't wish to take the first player token, you don't have to. You can just take this space if you want to build a minor improvement card. The grain seeds action is not an accumulation space because it doesn't have an arrow. If you take this action, simply take one grain from the supply. The farmland action allows you to plow one field. When you take this action, take one of the double-sided wooden room and field tiles from the general supply and place it on your farm board. If you've already plowed a field previously, this one has to be adjacent to it. When you take the lessons action, you can play one occupation card for the cost of one food. If you haven't already played any occupation cards, you don't have to pay the food for this first one. Occupation cards grant you bonus abilities and sometimes bonus points at the end of the game. When you take the day laborer action, you take two food from the supply. When you take the forest action, take all the wood that has been accumulated here. When you take the clay pit action, take all the clay that has been accumulated. When you take the reed bank action, take all the reed that has accumulated. And when you take the fishing action, take all of the food that has been accumulated. At the end of each stage is a harvest. When you come to this cornucopia symbol, that marks that it's harvest time. The harvest is done in three stages. The first stage is harvesting your crops. For each field with crops on it, you take one token off the top of the pile. That means for grain, it's going to take three harvests before this field will be empty again and ready for planting. And for vegetables, it will take two harvests. The second stage is feeding your workers. Each worker that you have requires two food. If you acquired a worker on this round so that that worker has never taken an action, it counts as a newborn and will only require one food. If you don't have enough food to feed all your workers, for each food that you're missing, you have to take a begging token, which is negative three points. So try to make sure that you have enough food to feed all your workers. The fireplace and cooking hearth will really come in handy here, because you can use those actions at any time to convert animals and vegetables into food. It's important to note that you can only convert grain into food during the bake bread action, so you can't do that during the harvest. The third stage of the harvest is breeding animals. 
If you have two of the same type of animal anywhere on your board, and you have space for more of those same animals, you gain one more. Some things to keep in mind are, you can only gain one of each type of animal, so even if you have four sheep, you don't get two extra sheep, you just get one. And also because breeding animals is the last thing you do in the harvest, if you turned any of your animals into food, they can no longer breed. The game is over at the end of the 14th round. There's still a harvest to do here, so you have to make sure that you feed your workers. And again, if you can't feed them all, you'll gain negative points here. After the final harvest is done, it's time to tally up your scores. The game board add-on has the scoring key. The scoring key is broken up into rows and columns, with each row being a different thing that you could have gained during the game, and each column being how many points you score for those things. So the first row here is plowed fields. If you have zero or one plowed field, you gain negative one points. If you have two plowed fields, you gain one point. Three plowed fields gains you two. Four gains you three. And five or more gains you four points. The second row is pastures. This includes stables by themselves. The next two rows are for numbers of grain and vegetables that you have. These will include all the grain and vegetables you have in your supply, as well as the ones that you still have on your fields. The third section is for animals, and the fourth section is not divided into rows and columns. This shows that you get negative one point for every empty field tile you have, you get one bonus point for every stable that's in a fenced in area, you get one point for every clay room you have, and you get two points for every stone room you have, you get three points for every worker you have, and then this final one reminds you to check the points you have on your cards. This can include occupations, major, and minor improvements. Remember to take into account any variable scores you can get. You could go ahead and get started now, and just use the rulebook to learn how each action card works as it comes up. For the rest of the video, I'm going to explain those action cards in more detail, and I'll also go into detail about all of the major improvement cards. Within the deck of action cards, there are a number of accumulation spaces. These all work the same way as the ones printed on the board. These include the sheep market, the western and eastern quarries, the pig market, and the cattle market. The rest of the action cards work somewhat differently. The fencing action allows you to build as many fences as you'd like at a cost of one wood each. The grain utilization action allows you to sow your fields. If you have grain or vegetables in your supply and you have an empty field, you can place the token on the field and then take either two grain or one vegetable, depending on which type you sowed, and place them on top. You won't be able to sow these fields again until they're empty. I'll explain how to do that during the harvest stage. This card also has an and or. The second option is to bake bread. In order to bake bread, you need a card with this symbol on it. Do whatever that bake bread action allows you. There are a couple of different things you can do when you bake bread, depending on which cards you've played, but I'll get into that detail later on. You can only take the basic wish for children action if you have unoccupied rooms in your house. When you take this action, place your worker and another worker from your supply on this card. Afterwards, you can also play a minor improvement card. It's important to note that there is no and or here, which means you can't play the minor improvement card if you don't also have space for another worker. The vegetable seeds action space is the same as the grain seeds action space, except you get one vegetable instead of one grain. The cultivation action space allows you to plow a field and or sow vegetables and grain. The urgent wish for children action space allows you to take more workers even if you don't have enough rooms in your house. The major improvement action space allows you to play either one major or one minor improvement card. The house redevelopment action space allows you to renovate your house. When you renovate, you have to do all the rooms in your house at once. If you can't afford to do all of them, you can't take this action. Each room that you renovate is going to cost one reed, plus, if it's a wooden room, one clay, or if it's a clay room, one stone. So if your house has three wooden rooms and you want to renovate, it's going to cost you three reed plus three clay. When you do this, place a clay room tile from the general supply on top of the wooden rooms marked on your board, and replace the third tile that you played. The farm redevelopment action space allows you to do a renovation the same way as the house redevelopment action, but afterwards you can also build fences. Again, this card is not an and or, so you can't build fences with this card if you can't also renovate your house. The major improvements are all in a general pool for all the players to take from. The minor improvements, each player has an individual hand. 
When playing a minor improvement card, there's a few things you need to look out for. The first is the cost. This is located in the top right hand corner of the card. You can't play this card if you don't have the resources available to pay for it. The second thing you need to look out for is the prerequisite. This is located in the top left hand corner. If there's nothing printed there, there is no prerequisite to play the card. In this case, the Pond Hut's prerequisite is that you have to have exactly two occupation cards played before you can play this card. If you have zero or one, you can't play the card. And if you have three or more, you also can't play the card. You have to have exactly two. Though once you've played the card, you can then play more occupations. The third thing to look out for is this symbol here. This is the victory point symbol. So at the end of this game, this card will be worth one victory point. The fourth thing to look out for is this little coin symbol. If a card you play has this symbol, that means that it'll have a variable score at the end of the game, determined by what it says on the card. So for example, with the Wool Blankets card, it says that during scoring, if you live in a wooden, clay, or stone house, you get three, two, or zero bonus points. The score is a variable score because it depends on certain factors that can change. Some cards, such as the Loom, have a victory point symbol and a variable victory point symbol. So this card will always be worth at least one point, plus one bonus point for every three sheep you have at the end of the game. The major improvement cards are laid out the same way as the minor improvement cards, the only difference being that they will never have a prerequisite. You can always play these cards as long as you can afford to pay the cost. There is one special cost for the cooking hearths. If you've already bought a fireplace, you can return them to the main pool and replace them with a cooking hearth for free. Or if you haven't, then you can just pay the cost straight up. We're now going to take a closer look at the major improvement bonuses. Both fireplace cards are exactly the same other than their costs. If you have a fireplace, then at any time you can turn one vegetable into two food, one wild boar into two food, one sheep into two food, or one cow into three food. This kettle symbol at the bottom shows you that these actions will be available for you. The bake bread symbol shows you that this card is available whenever you take the bake bread action. When you do, you can turn one grain into two food. The cooking hearth is essentially an upgrade of the fireplace. With this one, you can turn a vegetable or wild boar into three food, a cow into four food, and when you take the bake bread action, you can turn it into three food. The sheep still only becomes two. When you play the well, you gain four points, and then you also get to place one food on each of the next five round spaces, and at the start of those rounds, whoever played this card will get that food. If there aren't five spaces left, just place one on each of the remaining spaces. The clay oven is another card that allows the bake bread action. Whereas with the fireplace and the cooking hearth, you could take the bake bread action as many times as you have enough grain for. This one only allows you to take it one time, but you get to turn one grain into five food. If you had the fireplace or cooking hearth in play, you could still take more bake bread actions after this one. This card also allows you to take the bake bread action immediately when you play it. The stone oven is similar to the clay oven, but it allows you to take the bake bread action twice and exchange each one for four food. The joinery, pottery, and basket makers workshop are each worth two points as well as having variable scores. With the joinery, every harvest you can turn one wood into two food. And then at the end of the game, if you have three, five, or seven wood left, you get one, two, or three points. With the pottery card, you can turn one clay into two food. And then for three, five, or seven clay left at the end of the game, you get one, two, or three points. And with the basket makers workshop, you can turn one reed into three food every harvest, and for two, four, or five reed left, you get one, two, or three points. We're now going to take a closer look at the optional extensions. These provide extra action spaces. On the two-player one, it adds the cops, which is a one wood accumulation space, the modest wish for children, which is the same as the basic wish for children action card, except you don't get to play a minor improvement, and even though this will be available at the beginning of the game, you can only use the space starting in round five. It also adds the resource market, which gives you one stone and one food, and the animal market, which either gives you a sheep and a food, a wild boar, or lets you buy a cow for one food. If a player takes any of these actions, the other three are no longer available for the rest of the round. The three and four player variant is the same. It just removes the cops and the resource market. These are added by the board extension in the three and four player variants though. 
The other optional extension is the side job. It lets you build one stable for one wood, and no more. And or take the bake bread action. And that's pretty much Agricola. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. We'll see you next time.